Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us today for our seminar. My name is Salma Benaida, and I'm the Director of International Admissions at Kent State University in the United States, in the state of Ohio. Um, I know right now um, everyone is probably at home um, trying to stay safe from COVID. Um, and myself, um, I'm also at home. We've been working from home for two months. So um, I hope that everyone is staying safe and trying their best to stay positive during these times. Um, so what I would like to talk to you about today, um, so my session today is geared towards students who are interested in applying for graduate school in the US. Um, mainly what we mean with graduate school is masters and doctoral slash PhD programs. Um, so for my agenda today, we will do a quick overview of Kent State University. I will also walk you through the process that I recommend following when you're trying to apply to graduate school. How do you go about selecting your program, selecting your university? What is the graduate application process like for applying in the United States? Um, as every country many times require different processes. Um, and so we can start with a little overview on my university. So once again, it is Kent State University. Um, we're a large public research university located in a city called Kent, um, right near Cleveland um, and Pittsburgh and Columbus. Um, so we are located in a small town um, that has a lot of fresh air, a lot of trees, very safe. Um, we are also in Ohio, which is considered America's heartland. Um, and also the cost of living is significantly cheaper than bigger cities like New York City or Chicago. Um, we are in the top 25 for safety out of 4,000 institutions. So we definitely um, take pride in being a safe university and a safe city. We were founded in 1910 as a teacher training school. So when we started in 1910, we were training anyone who wanted to be a teacher in the area. We are ranked in the top national universities um, and also amongst the top public um, universities, national universities. Um, we have also been ranked 56 among US colleges. We offer over 300 programs at the bachelor's, master's, and doctoral level. And so we are pretty comprehensive in our offering um, with having so many opportunities for students to select a major of their choice. Some of our popular and prestigious majors that a lot of our international students tend to apply to are aeronautics and aerospace engineering, architecture, biology, business administration, computer science, entrepreneurship, fashion design and merchandising, um, interior design, and so on. So once again, we have over 300 programs and majors. These are some of our popular ones. Um, and of course, in terms of student body, uh, we are a large university. So we have about 28,000 graduate and undergraduate students that are enrolled on our Kent campus. Um, we also have over 1,500 international students from 100 countries. Um, so a lot of diversity. Um, you get to meet students from all over the world, of course, in addition to being around um, American students, our domestic students. We also offer 25 residence halls for students who want to live on campus, um, as well as 22 cafeterias or options for dining. Um, so very, um, very large in terms of offerings for residence services as well as dining and we have been ranked for dining services for food as one of the best um, in the nation. 
Of course, um, I had mentioned before about um, safety. Um, this is something that is very important when you're selecting your university, especially <clears throat> when you are far from home. Um, and as I've said before, we are one of the safest campuses um, in a, according to many agencies and many statistics. We also have our own Kent State University police, um, and they're usually around 24-7 uh, and, and seven days a week. Um, we also have campus security and phones uh, that are emergency phones that you can use that are near buildings and parking lots. So you're always feeling um, that you're pretty safe. Um, as well. And we have a text alert system that also lets you know if there are any issues with the weather or any issues with safety. So you're always kept up to date on that. Um, once again, with Ohio, uh, we are lucky to have a lot of big companies, um, a lot of national and international companies um, available within our state. And these are some companies where our international students also have been successful in getting jobs. Um, and then these are also some more um, national and international companies where our students uh, have worked. Um, so now that I gave you an overview about my university, Kent State University, I wanted to go more into the presentation and give you um, a little bit of an overview about applying to graduate school in the U.S. Um, so if you know that you want to study a master's or doctoral program in the U.S. or really um, anywhere else, um, then you want to think about selecting your program. What do you want to study? Because oftentimes what you want to study will determine a lot of your next steps. Um, so that's the first thing you should ask yourself and narrow down to maybe two or three programs that you're interested in. Then you also want to think which universities have your program. I talk to a lot of students who maybe want to go to a certain university, but they don't realize that what they want to study is not available at that university. So you always want to make sure that you check for your program and see if your universities that you like have it. And then also you want to check the requirements. So you know what you want to study. You found it at a few universities. And then now you want to see what, what is the application and admission process like? What do they require from me? Um, because sometimes you may not match the requirements. They may need um, a GRE score that is a certain amount and maybe yours is lower um, and they're not flexible on that. So really making sure that you know what the requirements are also. So when you're preparing to study for your GRE or for the TOEFL or IELTS exam, you know what score um, you are, your goal is to get. Um, and of course, with what is required, um, you want to ask yourself a few questions. You want to take into account some of these that I'm listing here. So you want to evaluate the program. Is the program accredited? Um, so you want to make sure that the program has a regional accreditation so you don't have any issues when you want to work or also if you want to return home and get a job there so you don't have any issues with authenticating your degrees. Um, also, with the timeline, you want to know, um, is there an admission deadline? Is it a flexible deadline or is it just only one time a year? So you want to know because you want to apply before the deadline has passed. You also want to know what admission tests they require. So for international students applying to schools in the U.S., oftentimes they will be required to submit proof of English proficiency and they will need to submit those test scores. 
Um, they may also need in graduate school to take certain exams like the GRE or the GMAT exam. And those GRE and GMAT exam are also required of American students um, as well. So it's very standard in the United States to be required to submit one of those um, exams. Um, and I know I will have a, a, an opportunity at the end to do a, a question and answer, and I'll be able to address um, any of your questions. The other thing you want to think about that most graduate programs in the United States will require when you apply is letters of recommendations. Um, and we'll talk about each one of these categories in detail. They will also require a goal statement or what we call a statement of purpose. And then of course your transcripts and diplomas from your current uh, studies. And some programs do also require an interview. Um, and even if you're not in the United States, um, now the great thing with technology is a lot of times interviews are able to be conducted um, virtually online. Of course, other things when you're looking at the programs, um, once you've looked at the requirements, is looking at the program curriculum. Most universities in the US will list all the classes that you will take in that particular master's or PhD program. So look at those classes and see if that's really what you had in mind, because sometimes the names of the program um, may not match what you're actually going to study as much as you think um, it does. Also look at the faculty. Um, and this is specifically very important for doctoral and PhD students um, because you will be working very, very closely with faculty. And when you do your dissertation at the end of your program, um, you will need to have fa a faculty advisor and a faculty committee, and it's always better if the faculty has the, the same uh, research interests as you. So um, the great thing about American universities is you can find the CVs and resumes for all of the faculty on the website. So you're able to see what their research is, where they went to school, um, and really see which faculty um, you feel um, you really are interested in working with, because that may also determine what university you end up selecting. Of course, you want to look at program reputation. Is it a good program? Does it have a good reputation? Where do the students go and work after they finish this program? Uh, once again, any rankings or any um, any awards um, that the faculty or the students have been able to get. And of course, I do want to caution about rankings. Um, Sometimes a university may be average in ranking, but they may be highly ranked in one particular program. So just because a university may not be in the top 100, it doesn't mean that maybe their, their PhD in engineering is not good. It may be that their PhD is in the top 20 um, in the US. So there's a lot of distinction um, for university ranking and also program level ranking. Um, another important consideration that I recommend um, taking into account is cost. Um, in the US, tuition and living expenses costs vary uh, from university and institution to institution. Um, so, of course, you want to look at the cost and what you can afford and if the university offers any scholarships and assistantships when you're selecting your school. Because maybe your favorite school may, may not be within your price range or within your budget. So you may need to adjust if you're not able to get any scholarships or loans, etc. You also want to look at campus facilities. What are they offering? Um, of course, especially if you're doing research, um, you want to make sure that the university 
is known for research, that they have good labs with um, state-of-the-art equipment. Um, and so, of course, those are things that you want to take into account. And most of the time, because of the cost of an American education, you want to make sure that you have access um, to good facilities. For instance, many schools and universities um, ha give access for the library, of course, for free, where you can print for free. Uh, you can go and use the gym for free as well. So you also want to see what value are you getting for your money in addition to your degree, um, um, because that's also very important. You also want to look at career services and job prospects. Does the university provide any um, career assistance to help you with your resume, uh, especially that interviewing in the United States is probably very different than in Turkey. Uh, for instance, in the United States, you should not put your picture on your resume. I know in many countries around the world, you are required to put your picture. You are required to put if you're married or single, how many children you have. And those are all things that you are not supposed to put on an American resume. Um, so I'd our university, we offer a lot of help for, for international students and domestic students on getting their resume ready and also on helping them with the interview process. So when they go interview for jobs, they're not nervous. They're more used to the questions that they're going to be asked. Um, also, in terms of career services, does the university organize career fairs? I know at Kent State, um, a few times a year, we bring companies to our campus, and all of our students are able to meet with them and interview with them. Um, and so that's a, a really great um, event to not move from your university and have all the companies come to you. Um, so you also want to look at these other considerations to, to determine the value um, of what you're getting. Um, and of course, being an international student, um, you want to make sure that you have the support that you need, um, whether it's for your international student services, for immigration, um, for admissions and student activity. Um, and so also making sure that you ask the university or your research on the website, what type of support do you offer international students? Um, is there tutoring for them? So there's of course academic support, but also support with activities, with making friends, with events, with holiday celebrations, et cetera. Um, so these are a few things that you should think about when you're considering um, applying or studying um, in the United States. Um, and of course, going to um, the, some of the required documents, um, I do want to talk a little bit. I had mentioned the letters of recommendation and goal statement, and I do want to talk a little bit more in detail about those um, to kind of give you some tips of what those means. So most of the graduate programs would require two to three letters of recommendations that you must submit at the time of application. Um, sometimes there is confusion. Um, I do get to see a lot of recommendation letters from applicants. Um, and some of the things that I notice is a lot of times students will not select the right person to be their recommender. So um, you want to make sure that the person that is writing this letter for you knows you well enough. Um, so it shouldn't be someone that barely knows you or a professor that's in a class where you got a really bad grade. Um, so you also want to make sure that even if your recommender knows you, let's say it's a professor that you took a few classes with and you did well, um, still give them um, a copy of your resume and a copy of your goal statement. Let them know about the program that you're applying to so you can make it easy for them to write a recommendation letter that is tailored to the program you're applying for. 
because if they don't know what program you're applying to, your recommendation letter is going to be very generic. Or if you don't, they don't know that you're applying to Kent State University and they don't put that on the recommendation letter, it's not as strong because you can use that letter for any other university. And of course, who to ask? Um, once again, uh, a professor in your field is typically the best um, that you could choose. Of course, in some programs um, that require work experience that are more of professional programs or professional degrees, um, previous or current employer, an internship supervisor, you can use those also as recommenders. Um, believe it or not, sometimes people include friends and family members writing letters of recommendation for them. Um, and for master's and PhD for admission in the US, those are not typically accepted. Those are not typically strong. It has to be someone who has observed you in a capacity as a student and can speak to your ability to be successful um, in class. Um, of course, as I mentioned earlier, um, many, many uh, universities will require admission tests. One test that is typically required of all international students is proof of English proficiency. Um, and although that is required, um, you have the option to take a few tests. It doesn't have to be just TOEFL or IELTS. There are quite a few options that you're able to explore and take. However, you always wanna make sure that the school that you're applying to or schools that you are applying to are accepting these tests. Um, so for example, if you take the PTE, but the school that you want to apply for only accept TOEFL or IELTS, you're going to have to pay money again and take another test. So that's why it's really important to do research before. Know what the schools that you're applying to accept and know what the minimum score that you need to get. For example, at Kent State University, we accept TOEFL, we accept IELTS, we accept PTE, Pearson Test of English. We accept the MeLab, it's the Michigan um, English test. And we also recently, especially due to COVID, um, started accepting the Duolingo English test. Um, so it depends. So like for us, we accept all of these tests, but some other universities may only accept one or two. So you always wanna make sure um, that you do that research ahead of time. And of course, um, Another test that is very common for master's students and most definitely for doctoral PhD students is the GRE exam. And the GRE stands for Graduate Record Examination. Um, and once again, like I said, it's not just for international students. American students are also required to take the GRE uh, for some of the programs. So this test really is supposed to prepare you or see how prepared you are for graduate school. Um, there is typically uh, a verbal section and also an analytic section um, that has more to do with math, like a quantitative and a, and a qualitative type of sections on these tests. Once again, um, some masters in the US, I know at Kent State, we uh, have quite a few masters that don't require the GRE for students. Um, at the PhD level, it gets a little bit more complicated where many of them do require the GRE. Um, and also right now during um, the COVID-19 situation, a lot of um, test centers has been closed. So it has been challenging for students to take the GRE in the US, but also all over the world, um, as well as TOEFL and IELTS. And currently, um, many of our programs have been working with students affected by the situation to waive the GRE exam or have them take the Duolingo English test um, instead of TOEFL or IELTS. Um, so definitely um, make sure, uh, because right now a lot of the test centers are closed, um, so reach out to the schools and also ask what type of accommodations they're offering. 
Um, currently as well, the GRE is offering an at-home test that you can take from your home as long as you have a computer and access to internet. Um, the third test that you may have heard about is the GMAT exam, and the GMAT stands for Graduate Management Admission Test. Um, and so with its name having management in it, um, GMAT is typically required for students who want to apply for business programs. So if you want to do an MBA, um, if you want to do a master's in accounting, finance, marketing, uh, or PhDs, typically um, you will need the GMAT. At Kent State University for our MBA, um, you are able to take either the GMAT or the GRE. Uh, we accept both for those. Um, and then um, the three last tests um, are not very common. You may not have heard of them, but in the United States, they are very specific and required for more of the professional degree. So if you want to go to law school in the United States, uh, you must take the LSAT, which stands for Law School Admission Test. If you want to go to um, a medical school in the U.S., you have to take the MCAT. So it's the Medical College Admission Test. Um, pharmacy is also similar. Uh, so the PCAT is for Pharmacy um, College Admission Test. Um, so once again, um, it doesn't mean that you have to take all of these research your program and see what you need to take. Most of the time, you won't need to take the last three, but definitely the English proficiency, sometimes the GRE or the GMAT. Um, talking a little bit about the goal statement, um, we will spend a couple of slides going over what is a goal statement, um, how to make a successful goal statement. And so um, there are typically two categories of goal statements that you will have to do. And a goal statement also is the same thing as statement of purpose. Each school um, may request something different. So um, the two categories are typically a general goal statement or a response to a specific question. Um, and I'll go back here. Um, for the general um, goal statement, they really just tell you to submit a statement of purpose. And basically, you need to talk about why you're applying to this program, what makes you qualified to be successful in this program, why should they accept you, and also what do you plan to do um, with that program. The other type of goal statement is more specific, where that program that you're applying to will ask you to actually um, some questions, and you need to respond to those specific questions in your goal statement. Um, so they may ask you to talk about your research, for instance, and how that relates to you applying to this program. Um, so most of the time, um, you could see both. I would say it's 50-50. Um, sometimes it will be a very general goal statement. Sometimes they will ask you more specific questions. So pay attention to that and make sure that you answer those questions if it's a response to a specific question. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, with goal statement, you want to determine your purpose in writing this statement. And so, um, of course, you're writing the statement to apply for the program, but why are you choosing this program um, as opposed to something else? Um, so you want it to be very specific. Why are you applying for this school? Why for this program? Also, um, try to be very straightforward. Um, don't submit five pages, 10 pages of goal statement. Most goal statements are typically uh, one to two pages. They really don't want you to go over that. And most of the time, it may be double spaced. Um, so be very straightforward. Um, they are reviewing a lot of applications. So you want to get to the point. 
And also be very specific about your purpose for pursuing the graduate program. Once again, why are you choosing that major and why that major at that specific university? Also make sure that you address um, specific areas of study that you specialize in. So if you're interested in a specific area of research, make sure that you mention that. If you've done, if you found out that any faculty at the university is specialized in that same research, mention that, mention, because that also shows that you've done a lot of research and that you're very interested um, in this program. Also, address your preparation and your fit into the program. What, because programs really want you to be successful. They wanna select people that are going to do well in the program, that are going to graduate and not fail. Um, so you wanna tell them how have you, how, what will make you successful? How has your schooling before this or any training you've done make you prepared and make you a good fit for this program. And also include any relevant information that may not come through in your application. Um, it's really your chance to stand out in this goal statement because your application is going to be online, you're going to submit your transcripts, it's really a chance for them to know who you are. And many times, if they have two students that have the same profile academically, let's say the same um, English score, the same GRE score, uh, they both have good grades, sometimes the difference might just be the goal statement. Um, and so really try to spend a lot of time on this and one common mistake I see, it's okay to apply to different universities, but make sure that when you do your goal statement that you change the name of the university and that you put a little bit of information about that university. I can't tell you how many times I've seen goal statements that have a name of another university and not Kent State. And so that really does not look good. Um, for you. Um, and now that we talked about the requirements, I want us to just talk a little bit about a typical admission and application uh, process. So of course, um, if you're trying to study a master's or a PhD, you wanna select the graduate application. Most universities will have an undergraduate application that will have freshmen and transfer students, and they will also have a graduate application. So that's the one that you typically want to select. And of course, once you select the graduate, you can pick if you're applying for a master's degree or if you're applying for a doctorate degree. Typically to apply for a master's degree, you must have a bachelor's degree. Um, to apply for a doctorate degree, you typically must have a master's degree. Although some programs may allow students to go from bachelor's to PhD directly, um, depending on how qualified they are. Of course, uh, for the admission requirement, when you complete your online application, uh, for all universities, there is typically a fee. So the application fee, for example, at Kent State is $70 um, that you pay at the time of application. Also, many graduate programs in the United States will require um, that you have a 3.0 GPA equivalent um, on a 4.0 scale. So typically, that's a B average um, is what they typically would require for a graduate student. Um, and of course, this is um, the application process. So, Typically, um, once you submit your application, you submit your transcripts, your goal statement, your recommendation letters, any test scores that you need. Um, the admission office will check for completeness. So they will make sure that we have everything um, in order. If something is missing, they will reach out to ask for it. 
Um, and then once everything is there, um, they will begin the credential evaluation. So this part could be very different depending on what university you apply for. Some universities will require that you take your transcripts before you apply <clears throat> and take them to a company that evaluates credentials like WES or ECE, and then you have to pay money to get their your grades converted to an American grade. Um, at Kent State University, we do it all in-house, so you don't need to pay anything extra to do that. You just apply and give us your transcripts, and we do the evaluation for you um, for free. So we do that credential evaluation. We basically convert your grades from the Turkish scale or whatever education system you studied in into the U.S. Um, GPA that's typically out of four. After that, then um, your application is sent to the graduate department. So our admissions office will send your application to engineering program if you applied for engineering or business. Um, and once that your application is with the program, they will be um, reading it and reviewing it. Many programs at the graduate level have committees. So you will have a group of professors and faculty reviewing um, your application. And then, of course, once they reach a decision, um, the decision is made and then the, uh, the decision is communicated to the applicant. Um, so that's kind of what that process is. Sometimes the process can take a week or two. Sometimes it may take months. Um, so once again, it's always good to know what the deadlines are and also know if the program reviews applications as they come or some programs will wait until the deadline is over and then they will and they got all their application and review everything all at once while some program review as the applications come in. So at the graduate level, I really recommend starting your application process months in advance, sometimes six months in advance, seven months in advance. That way you have enough time um, to get an admission decision and also start the next process. And so, of course, um, once a student is admitted, then we have a second process that starts for international students uh, because you want to be able to come to the United States on a student visa. Um, and so I, I just want to talk to you a little bit more about this um, just to kind of have you think about the whole process of what happens when you apply and after you apply. So once you're admitted, congratulations, that's great. Um, then you will receive communication from the international office or the international admissions office requesting that you submit proof of finances as well as your passport and that of your dependents if you wanna bring your spouse or children with you. Um, and so this is typically not required for admission purposes. This is not required until after you're admitted um, for us to issue you your immigration document. Um, so proof of finances can be a bank statement. Um, it can be a scholarship letter if you have a scholarship from your government or some of our graduate programs offer scholarships. Um, and they can issue a letter as well. Um, and so that is a requirement in order to get an I-20. The U.S. government requires that you show proof of finances before we can issue that I-20. So once you submit the, those finances and the passports, um, passport copies, I should say, then we will review the financials, make sure that the amount is the correct amount um, that you need to show uh, and make sure that everything looks authentic. And then if we're satisfied um, by the, the proofs that you have submitted, we will issue the form I-20. And the I-20 form is a government, an official government document. It's a piece of paper that has about three pages. Um, and so once we have that issued, we will send you 
the I-20, the admission letter, your official admission letter that you can use for your visa appointment, and then also any information at Kent State. We send students a nice welcome packet that talks about their next steps, how to prepare for a visa interview, what to pack when they come here, international student orientation. But once you have your I-20 and your admission letter, um, then you're able to appear for your interview. You can schedule your visa um, interview. Currently, because of COVID-19, many US consulates um, are closed still. Um, there are rumors that they may reopen sometime in June, uh, but it really depends on the situation in each country. So currently, um, the majority of US consulates are not open, uh, but hopefully they will be able to, to open soon. So this is the I-20 process to give you a description um, of that. And I believe we have come to the end of our session. And now I am happy to take any questions. Um, there are, I have to go back to the screen. Um, and thank you again for your attention. I hope this was helpful and feel free to submit um, questions. Okay. I see there are some questions. Salma, great. we have two minutes. So if you can just answer the questions and wrap up, that okay. would be great. Great. Um, and so we have a question that says if there are any scholarship opportunities for master's degrees. Um, yes, there are. We call them graduate assistantships. Um, and they're offered by the program. And if you are selected for a graduate assistantship, they will um, cover all of your tuition and fees, and then they will give you a small stipend. And then also, um, uh, should I add gender nationality in my CVs? Um, so in the US, you should not include anything about your gender, your nationality. It's really your name and your education experience and your work experience. Nothing that identifies you because in the US, they don't want to discriminate against anybody. They don't think that's important what your gender is, where you come from is. Uh, so you don't need that information at all. And I will send um, information um, for all of you. I believe when you signed up for this webinar, um, you were able um, to submit your email. So I'm happy to send this slide and send more information about um, scholarships. And typically our tuition at the master's level is about 16 to $18,000 per year. All right. Um, and sorry, I'm not able to, to stay longer and answer more questions as we are out of time. But once again, um, if I have all your emails, I will be um, happy to follow up with all of you and send you more information on scholarships and costs. So once again, thank you so much for your attention. Um, and I would like to um, thank IEFT uh, for hosting me on this webinar. I'm usually in Turkey and um, um, in person, but right now with Corona, we're, we're all unable to travel. So thank you again, and please stay safe and, and take care of yourself. Thanks a lot for participating with this uh, webinar, Salma. Uh, it was a great presentation, and I, we hope that we will see you in Turkey soon. Yes, me too. Thank you so much for having me. Bye. Take Bye. care.